Okay, hello everybody. Today we're going to take a look at what happens when uh, we have an asymmetrical flat deployment. Now we're in the simulator right now and we've got our flight model called up so that we can see uh, if you look at the lines coming up from the wing, the lines going back from uh, or forward from the propeller um, and of course we can also see uh, lift vectors on the tail it's showing us uh, what forces are acting on the airplane right now we're in straight and level unaccelerated flight 4,500 feet headed back towards headed back towards uh, Gillespie and uh, got the autopilot on, just heading a little bit. Airplane's turning. I'm not doing it. The yoke is. The autopilot is. Uh, we're going to go ahead and change our view. So one of the things that spawned this was a conversation about whether or not you should deploy your flaps while turning. Well, I've always been under the impression that... Uh, you could do this, it was not a big deal. Then I saw a video, read an article from Rod Machado about it, uh, and found out that uh, the airplane is indeed controllable if you have an asymmetric flat, flap deployment. Now, what is an asymmetric flap deployment? A flap, asymmetric flap deployment is a condition in which you deploy flaps, and uh, I don't know, maybe one of the flaps on one side gets stuck and the other one deploys. Okay, they're not the same on each side, so you're going to have differing lifts and drag uh, on each wing. Now, because we have the flight model displayed here, we can see, uh, you know, how much lift or drag we have at any given point. So, uh, the higher the lines here, the more lift we have. Um, and uh, we're going to go ahead and deploy flaps and see what that looks like. Ooh, that's asymmetric, right? Only one wing had a flat deployment. We're going to go ahead and take a look at that from back here. This particular wing, the left wing, has no flat deployment. And the right wing has one notch of flaps down. Now, as we can see from our green lift lines, uh, we've got quite a bit more lift on the left side excuse me, the right side of the aircraft. And the autopilot, because it's in heading hold, uh, is giving it some right aileron. You can see here uh, that uh, we've got the left aileron down, the right ailerons up a little bit to compensate for the added lift. Now, that looks like a whole lot more control surface here than these two control surfaces. But let's remember, the further out we have uh, from the longitudinal axis of the airplane, the more leverage uh, the control surface has. So this has quite a bit, twice as much leverage as this control surface, and it has this one helping it out. So um, the airplane is, is certainly controllable at this point. Um, I'm going to go ahead and if you take a look here, uh, down here at the yoke, and I believe your lower right-hand corner, the autopilot has, has banked the ailerons. I'm going to go ahead and take the, that notch of flaps out. Autopilot is going to correct for that and return us to something that's a semblance of straight and level flight. Again, we're going to go ahead and put uh, one notch of flaps in. Our left flap is stuck compensates with right aileron, and the autopilot's able to maintain control. Pretty slick, right? We're going to go ahead and leave it there, and we're going to disconnect the autopilot and see how I can do. All right, autopilot is disengaged. I keep the control inputs, and I have straight and level flight. We're headed towards Gillespie now. Now, the real question is, uh, can that happen in landing throttle settings. All right. 
because all of a sudden some of these control surfaces get a little less effective. So I'm going to pull it back to about 1600 RPM and uh, try to maintain straight and level. I'm staying coordinated, as you can see, and I'm maintaining my course. Now, obviously, we've pulled out RPM and I'm maintaining basically the same amount of trim so I've started a fairly rapid descent. I'm going to go ahead and try to land it at Gillespie. This is going to be difficult because I can't see out the front of the airplane. I'll actually probably uh, change my view and I'm really high now. I can't use any more flaps. I'm going to go ahead and switch my view to inside the cockpit. I'm going to, I've got throttle all the way out. I'm maintaining coordination with my, my uh, uh, rudder. I'm applying a little left rudder here. And I'm going to go ahead and pitch for about 70 knots. Now this is almost certainly going to be a go around. I don't feel comfortable slipping the airplane right now. I'm going to go ahead and trim it. So that I don't have to work so hard at this. Always a good idea. Let it slow down. And you can see I've still got my aileron input here. I'm descending at 850 feet per minute. I'm going to go ahead and maneuver a little bit, staying coordinated so that I can lose altitude a little more quickly. And I might actually decide to trim for a slightly slower airspeed, a little more up trim. The critical thing in this situation is to stay coordinated. I'm going to go to about 65 knots. Now your stall speed is dependent on many cases your flap deployment right it's right around uh, you know 50 some 50 knots ish with uh, the uh, with no flaps it's around 40 knots with flaps uh, so we've got a one wing that's got some flaps and one wing that has others so we've got kind of asymmetrical stall speed so that's a that's something to to really keep in mind as we fly towards the airport think about landing this thing I'm gonna go ahead and now, if I had this happen in, in reality, and I had air traffic control running, um, I would probably, I'm going to make a left 360 here to lose altitude, I would probably declare an emergency. Uh, that would be a prudent thing to do. I don't think I'd need crash trucks or anything, but uh, that gives us uh, the most options. And at that point, air traffic control is ready to help us down to about 2,000 feet, making a nice gentle coordinated turn. And we've got Twin Peaks off to the left. 66 knots, nice and easy. Whole lot of right aileron. Coming around nicely with, uh, I'm going to go ahead and add some power so I don't get too low. Um, it's a little tricky, I'll be honest with you. Maintaining coordination, not too much, not too much bank. 65 knots. Whole lot of right aileron to compensate. And there's my runway out my left window, about to pass through the A-pillar, taking some bank out. And I'm going to pick up the airspeed since I'm lower to 70 knots. A little forward trim. A little more power. Nope, I'm still high on the glide slope, so I'm going to pull my power out. Staying nice and coordinated. Really, really important here. I'm 
And there we are. I think we're going to be we're roughly on the extended center line, not too shabby, staying coordinated. And uh, we're starting to intercept the glide slope here. Fairly quick descent. We might need to add some power at the end. Might not. So the usual flaps up landing in the Cessna, you're going to want to be about 70 knots. We're going to go ahead and do that. We're not going to want to stall either one of these wings until we're ready to touch the airplane down. And start the round out, staying coordinated, keeping that correction in, letting the airplane fly, find the runway. And there we are. And we're down. So can you land the airplane with asymmetrical flaps? Absolutely. So in the article, I'm going to link in the, the notes below, uh, it quotes, um, Rod Machado quotes uh, CFR, Code of Federal Regulations uh, 14, Part 23. That's the certification of aircraft. Now, when you talk about can you turn the airplane and deploy flaps at the same time, is it wise, is it going to roll it over? Uh, CFR 23 calls out, which is about certification aircraft, calls out the fact that uh, the airplane has to be controllable and flyable. And this is, I'm summarizing here, please read it yourself. Uh, with an asymmetrical flap deployment or it has to be virtually impossible to have an asymmetrical flap deployment. What kind of situation would that be? Uh, a situation where the flap goes all the way across the airplane, the underside of the airplane, and it's just one flap, that kind of situation. Um, in this case, Cessna did test this airplane for asymmetrical flap deployments and uh, uh, they, they found out that yes, you can fly the airplane kind of normally, um, when they're deployed asymmetrically. Now, uh, if you have a second notch of flaps and no flaps on the other side, this thing becomes a bit of a handful. Now, that's that's why you don't dump the entire uh, handful of flaps, all, all three notches, for example, uh, in at the same time. It's, it's good practice to put in one notch of flaps, trim the airplane, make sure you have control of it, second notch of flaps etc so um, uh, so obviously good practice is there but I'm comfortable uh, putting flaps in the turn if it does go asymmetrical you want to have your hands on the uh, flap lever you can always simply retract them go around do a no flaps landing once you've composed yourself so um, so that's my take on uh, no flap landings. We're able to simulate it, and you can see the physics here in the sim. Uh, and uh, I hope you get a chance to try it yourself. This is the uh, X-Plane 12, which uses blade element theory to, to model the physics, and that's what you saw graphically depicted uh, on the external view of the aircraft. Uh, and, uh, of course, this is my real sim gear-based panel uh, with uh, a G1000 set from real sim gear that's just phenomenal couple of pan panels from the Aviation Training Foundation that add to the realism. And uh, I hope you uh, learned something. Hope you enjoyed the video. And everybody have a great day. Take care. Fly safe.